Next we're going to work on the porch railings for the right side of the house and here on page three of the cutting guide the last thing on the list is the porch railings and we need four of these that are one and three quarters by five and three eighths. I just have one of them out here in front of me right now. So we need to do a little cutting and we want to cut this in an L shape formation and the legs of the L are going to be three eighths of an inch. Three eighths of an inch. So one, I just marked one leg there so I know where to stop. Now I'll cut the second leg. Now I can go back and finish cutting the first leg. So we're going to repeat that for all four pieces and then make sure you have them oriented in this, this way so that the short end of the L is going back in this direction and we want to cover two of them with pattern paper. So I'll do that and then I'll be back. So now that we have our uh, two pieces covered with paper, we want to go ahead and punch two quarter inch holes in it. And uh, you really need one of these power punches or something that punches a quarter inch hole through thick material. Because what we want to do is put these holes a sixteenth of an inch on this end, a sixteenth of a uh, sixteenth of an inch from all three sides here and then down in this corner it basically gets centered and with a sixteenth of an inch on the two sides. So um, the only tool I know to do that with is one of these power punches. So I'm going to do the first two holes here and once you have those two holes done you'll want to use this as a template for all of your other three pieces. This one that has um, paper on it and the other two that do not. So I'll do that and then I'll be back. So now I have all four of my pieces with the holes punched, two with paper and two without. And the way this is going to go together is that the top railing consists of a papered piece and a non-papered piece as does the bottom railing. But before we put them together we want to punch some holes for our balusters. Those are the, the little upright sticks that come along the railing. And so I'm going to take one of my pieces that doesn't have any paper on it and put it on top of one of the ones that does. And I want to make some markings and I've decided to put my balusters about every half inch apart. So I'm just going to kind of center that and make some tick marks every half inch here along this and then I think I'll just fit two in over here at the side. They may not be half inch exactly, but holding back about three eighths of an inch from this back edge and make one. And I'm going to use my crop -a dial to do this and I want to punch uh, both sides at once. So these are going to be eighth inch holes, so that's the smaller one on your crop -a dial. So you want to move the little register so that the hole ends up being halfway um, on that 3 8 and you might want to experiment to see what that is and then I'm going to just put these two pieces together with some temporary adhesive and then I'll be able to punch both at once. And now we'll want to measure for our dowels. We need two dowels, one on each side here and you want them to be a snug fit but not push up but snug. So take a careful measurement 
and then and one side may be a little bit different from the other so measure both sides and then I have some quarter inch dowel here that I will cut to length and then I'm going to um, I'm just going to use my Copic marker to color the pieces you could paint them um, so I'll be back when I've got that accomplished so here are my two dowels and they fit snugly in there so we'll be able to use them to put our railing together so I'm just going to put the house aside for a second so the way these go together is the top piece is made up of a paper pattern paper with no holes and uh, pa uh, no pattern paper with holes so those are going to get attached together and the bottom railing is made up of uh, the pattern paper that has the holes and it's on top of the one without so in order to kind of help uh, keep things all together when I go to do that glue up I'm just going to use my my dowels and just you have to be careful because obviously these these holes are really close to the to the edge so I'm just kind of twisting and holding on to the um, uh, the paper you know giving some support to the uh, piece at the same time and I'm going to do this one now I have these about an inch apart and I'm just going to put some glue uh, on the edges of the one with the holes in it and then I can bring these two together and everything should be aligned pretty well I'm staying away from the dowels because I don't want to attach them to the dowels yet and then I'll just bring these together a little bit at a time on each end just by doing my twisting motion on the dowels and then put some pressure on that and allow that to set up and repeat that for the other railing so now we have our railings assembled and I've got some 8 inch dowel here that I'm going to color with my Copic marker and I think I'm going to have mine um, spindles be about an inch and a half tall so I'm going to color all of those and then cut them um, as accurate, accurately as possible into inch and a half lengths and we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 of them so I'll get that done and then I'll be back so now we're ready to install all of our little spindles and I don't think I'm going to use any glue I may need to twist these and so um, I'm going to try putting them all in on the bottom row first and then coming back and attaching um, the top row so we'll see how that goes so now I have all of the spindles in the top and the bottom and I'm going to um, try to work this top part down and I may try to put a little dab of glue there um, or else on the the um, uh, porch columns here so so I thought it might be a little bit uh, tricky to get those uh, spindles in there but really it wasn't too bad I got them lined up closely and then put pressure you know on top and bottom and they just kind of popped into place and before I did that I put a little spot of glue on the top there and so yeah the porch assembly is ready to go in so I'll bring the 
right part of the house back in here. Now when this gets assembled or installed, we'll put some glue on the top and the bottom of the posts and then we can also put some on the ends of the, um, the little flat parts here because it goes in and just kind of tilting it in to get it in there. And in this position I can kind of see where it's going. And then before you, I would dry fit it first and before you put glue on, make sure everything is straight and plumb and level. And then that will be the little porch railing for the front of the house. Now it's time to work on the front door. And I've decided to use this image from the paper as the front door. And also I've added on to the cutting guide on page three under the lightweight chipboard we'll use a piece that is two inches by four inches for the front door. So, when we look at this image here, what we want is a piece that's two inches wide, and so basically center that, this image, and we'll cut a strip that's two inches wide. Make sure that you come up uh, and include the entire frame that is uh, around the image and then you can uh, you can cut it off even with the border down here at the bottom so I'll do that and then I'll be back so I have my image cut out as you can see and I have backed it with some score tape in preparation for attaching it to the chipboard And before I do that, I'm just going to blacken the bottom edge here. And then we can go ahead and attach it to our chipboard and we'll make sure that it is towards the top of this piece of chipboard. Don't worry about this empty space at the bottom. So now that we have our image attached to our chipboard, we want to uh, cut off the top. We want to have a, like a rounded top door. So I'm going to just cut along the outside of the outermost beige kind of rounded edge here. I'll just do that with my scissors. And if you have, you can, um, you know, figure out where to follow this line down here. If you have a a uh, circle template like I do. I have a two inch circle template here. I can take that and draw a line to extend those lines so that I have something to follow over here. Or you can just eyeball it. It's not a critical thing. So now that we've made those cuts, we want to fill in this bottom down here and I'm just going to take some of the stripe on the column here between the paper and cut it just wide enough. I'm, I'm going to cut the whole thing. I can always trim it off. I'm going to cut down here into the uh, black a little bit uh, just in case it's needed. Um, I can measure here. I need a little bit over a half an inch so I'm going to cut about a, a 5 8 inch stripe of the, the column here by, um, you know, it can come a little bit over two inches wide. We have to have at least two inches to go um, underneath the um, image. So here's my little strip that I've cut out. And again, I want to just ink this top edge here. And then I backed it with some score tape. I'm just going to butt that up 
directly underneath my image here. And then I'll just use my craft knife to cut around it. Now I'd like to add trim around um, the sides and the top. I don't need anything on the bottom here. So I'm going to, I've got a piece of black cardstock that I've backed with um, score tape as you can see. And I'm just going to trace around this. I'm going to use one of the edge, straight edges um, just to make my life a little easier. And trace all around it. And I'll cut it out and then I'll draw a line an eighth of an inch in so that I can have that nice eighth of an inch border like we have had on all the windows etc. Before I attach my trim I'm just going to come along the edges here a little bit with my black marker just in case my trim doesn't fit exactly perfectly. Um, then no uh, beige will show through here. So just kind of doing that. And now I'll just attach my trim. Now I'm going to go around the edge with my black marker. And then I think you can see I've got a little brad set out here. I'm going to add that brad as a, a doorknob. And then we'll be ready to attach the door to the house. So I've prepped the back of my door with score tape and now it's just a matter of centering it here on the front of the house. Now mine just fits underneath the um, entrance roof and yours should too. If not, you may need to trim a little. You could trim it. I would suggest trimming it from the bottom if you need to. So now we have our front door installed. So now we're ready to add railings on the um, entrance porch and you can see here on page two of our guide uh, porch railings there's four pieces and they're three eighths by two and three eighths so I've got those cut here and then just like when we did the railings that go on the uh, right side of the house I've covered two of these with pattern paper and we want to punch a quarter inch hole just on one end but we'll do the same thing where we uh, we keep it a sixteenth of an inch from the end and then centered uh, on the three eighths inch dimension so that kind of gives about a sixteenth of an inch on those sides as well. We just need one hole on the end of each piece. So punch one then line them up so that they're all exactly the same. So I'll get that accomplished and then I'll be back. Now just like we did for the railings on the right side of the house, I'm going to uh, put three holes in on two of these. So I put some temporary adhesive on one of the pieces with patterned paper and I'm lining it up with a piece that has no paper and then I've just spaced out three uh, spots here for holes. They're about uh, the same distance apart here, half an inch in the middle and then I kind of just split the difference on the two ends there. So I'll just again use the uh, small setting, the eighth inch setting on my crocodile to punch these three holes and then I'll be back. I've measured the distance uh, between uh, the underside of the entrance roof, which is recessed up in here as you recall, and the top of the steps and I've cut two dowels to fit snugly in there. These are 
quarter inch dowels so I have those cut and then I can put the house aside for a second and so here just like when we did the right house when we put these together the pattern paper with the holes goes on top of a, a plain one and a, a pattern paper with no holes goes on top of one with holes so we'll go ahead and put those together So I've slipped a piece of cardstock behind here just so you can see where this railing is going to go in and you'll want to make sure that the post stays uh, plumb and parallel to everything. Now it may be that when the little um, tops of the railing go in back here that if, if if it wants to um, butt into the frame of the door you can just nick a little corner of the railing off. I think mine are going to be all right there. So I'll go ahead and get that installed and then I'll mimic the placement of this column just with this second plane column that's going to get go in over on that side. So I'll get both of those assemblies glued in.